the Arcadia Veteran Farmer Program, which is a training program for military veterans, for active duty service members, and um, for caregivers and you know immediate family members. Um, Bob referenced my background in uh, national security journalism. I spent about 20 years as a reporter covering the Pentagon, covering the military. And in 2002, went to Afghanistan for a couple of months, three to Iraq, four to Iraq. That was fun. I consequently came away with real appreciation for the resourcefulness and toughness, um, the resilience of people in the military. And um, when I got out of that world and ended up at Arcadia, which I'll tell you about in a moment, uh, it always stuck with me, uh, that feeling that I had that these people are capable of anything. Um, I joined Arcadia in 2013. Our mission is to cultivate vibrant local food systems that prioritize health, equity, and sustainability from the farm forward. We grow food on our farm, but we also grow farmers. Um, our farm is located right outside the gates of Fort Belvoir. It is on the grounds of the Woodlawn Pope Leahy estate. And this land used to belong to George Washington. So it's got, you know, a history to American veterans and, and farmers. And the nation, America, needs 700,000 new farmers over the next 20 years to replace the farmers who are aging out of the profession. Um, military veterans are among the Americans, uh, the rare Americans who are tough enough for this work. Um, but I can tell you that a hard day farming is no worse than your hardest day in boot camp and probably a lot better because nobody is yelling at you, maybe, and nobody is definitely shooting at you and you don't have to avoid landmines. So hooray. Um, farming is a um, incredibly uh, interesting career for veterans. If you feel called to it, it's very much a calling like being in the military or perhaps being in religious life is because it is a lifestyle and it is not just a job. You don't clock in at nine and clock out at five. It is um, all encompassing, but it is um, highly entrepreneurial. Um, it's really healthy. It allows people to sort of establish a life that gets, keeps them close to their family, which I know is important to a lot of people after many years of deployments. Um, you call the shots and you sort of work at your own pace. Uh, there's all kinds of different farming opportunities. Uh, that can adapt to any sort of physical or um, emotional or psychological sort of wounds that you're dealing with, um, if that's an issue for you. Farming is among the most dangerous professions, uh, sort of right behind uh, the military, I think, um, because you're using oftentimes big equipment. And so farming is also one of those um, professions that's really adaptable. One of our most successful graduates um, is in Tennessee and he and his wife have launched a farm. He lost an arm and a leg in Afghanistan and they have a hops farm and a vegetable farm and um, are raising some animals uh, for meat. And they also have a really active like farm stay program. And they have launched their own nonprofit helping to build gardens for families, uh, for service members and for, and for caregivers. So um, there are many ways that you can be engaged with farming. But the first thing that you need is a way to learn about all of that stuff. And so that's what we do at Arcadia. Um, we have a realistic hands-on training program. We go in three tracks. Um, we are already well into the, the one that most people find their way to Arcadia for. Um, and so we're, it's not open to new members uh, until next January, but it is the Arcadia Veteran Farmer Reserve. So this meets one weekend a month for 12 months. And then because we're trying to be clever, we ask that you spend an additional two weeks working on our farm or other farms so that you can learn sort of the day in and day out. So the Veteran Farmer Reserve meets the last Saturday and Sunday of every month, both days. And it was specifically created with veteran input to say like, what kind of training program could you do that would actually be relevant and useful? And instead of having it be every Wednesday night for 12 weeks, um, we clustered it on a weekend so that you can have a full-time job or you can be a full-time caregiver for your family, or you can be getting medical um, treatment or you can be in school full time and still manage to gut it out for that one weekend. And then you're with a cohort of all other veterans and a couple of um, caregivers or spouses and partners. Um, usually our cohort is about 20. So it's a nice comfortable size. 
And uh, it's generally folks from Virginia, Maryland, and DC, but we always have people coming in from further away. We had somebody fly up every weekend from Florida. We had somebody coming in from California and our graduates sort of spread out. We've got a bunch of people in Tennessee, a couple in North Carolina, New York, Delaware, uh, Massachusetts, uh, ten Tennessee, I mentioned Texas. Um, so they're all over and it's a really wonderful network and people, uh, as they come into it with each successive class, uh, really support each other. And, um, and we found out there's, there's a lot of collaboration between folks. And we also have somebody in Colorado. She just moved out there and has a llama farm. Um, so the veteran farmer reserve one weekend a month for 12 months, and it is uh, four main components. We do hands-on cultivation training so that you learn how to actually grow vegetables and farm. We do um, field trips to local farms, usually within an hour or two of, of Northern Virginia. And this is meant to give you an appreciation for all the different opportunities that exist in farming and to meet farmers who are doing it and get to have like hashtag real talk with them. How much did they have to invest to get this going? How many hours a week are they spending on this? And something that you should know is that the vast majority of American farmers farm part-time. Most farmers have an off-farm job. now. They shouldn't have to, but that's generally how it goes. And so most farmers are doing, you know, part-time and like having a, a truck patch on the weekends or whatever. So I just want to say that it is something that you can also do if you have another, if you have another job. Um, we also do, uh, we also do a lot of academic training and we started with the pandemic doing that via Zoom instead of gathering, gathering everyone all together. And that seems to have worked pretty well. Um, so, uh, so the logistical burden has now decreased in participating in this program, especially if you're traveling from far away. Um, the final piece is business training. Now, most farms, if they fail, it's because of their business practices, not because of their growing practices. So we have expert business farm business trainers that come in and teach you everything from how to set up your chart of accounts in QuickBooks to understanding the tax laws and how to, you know, how to make them benefit your business um, all, all the way through marketing and legal and insurance and land assessment. So we want people to come out of the Veteran Farmer Reserve either ready to go and buy their own farm or really fully understanding what they want to do next in their farm journey. Um, the nice part about the reserve, which is the one weekend a month, is that it attracts people who are already farming and have farms um, and people who are just beginning to explore this. Like they feel a little twinge when somebody, perhaps me, mentioned this to you and thought, oh, I want to check that out, but I don't have land and I don't know what I would do. Join our program. Let's really flesh it out and then see if you want to do it. So that's the reserve program and that the next class will start in January. We do have a USDA grant for that. There is tuition associated with it, but if you need a scholarship, we've never turned anybody down. Um, the next piece is our fellowship. This is great um, for somebody who's really looking to dive full-time into farming. And it's really great for somebody who's been through the reserve program, but it's not a requirement. This is a seasonal full-time on-farm job with our farmers. We are also flexible and can make that a part-time job. Um, it is on the job training approved by Virginia. So if you have GI Bill benefits left, you can access your base housing allowance while you work for us. And um, we can help you do all that paperwork. So that is um, that makes this a, a real possibility. We are also getting um, approved for skills bridge so that in your last three to I think six months in uniform, if you think that you want to be a farmer, you could come and work for us and be paid by the military and learn as you go sort of in an apprenticeship. We have had a couple of folks in the army using their CSP programs to come and work for us for I think like six to 12 weeks. And because we're so close to Belvoir, it was pretty easy to work out. Um, so the fellowship on farm intensive vegetable training and um, you learn everything and that's, and it's great. And you contribute to all pieces of our, of our um, mission. The final piece is if you graduate from one of those two programs, you can apply to be an incubator farmer. We have more land than we can farm. And so we have carved up pieces for graduates of our programs to come and launch their own farm businesses on our property. It's just an eighth of an acre, which sounds very small until you actually start working it. And, um, and it's vegetables. We, we, we can arrange for some other things. We have vegetables, we have bees, we have hops, we have flowers, um, all kinds of operations, but it's a chance for you 
to farm with training wheels on. We have the greenhouse, we have the irrigation, we have professional farmers on site, technical assistance to help you if you need it, if you're facing some difficulties in, in pests or whatever. Uh, we have deer fencing and you have a greenhouse, you have a walk-in cooler and um, a vegetable wash station. So we want people to come, start their businesses, learn their lessons, hopefully be wild successes. Um, but if they're not, they haven't like lost the, lost the shirt doing it because it's, you know, very low monthly uh, annual rent and lots of opportunities to start fresh the next year. And you can be on the um, incubator generally for three years. And then we want you to go off and start your farm. We also have um, just on our current incubator, we have a, uh, a seed starting farm. They're collecting seed, heirloom seeds. It's pretty cool. So there's all kinds of opportunities there. That's the veteran farmer program. And it's part of Arcadia, as I said, which is much bigger. So we grow food and we grow farmers. We also have on-farm training programs for kids to teach them about sustainable agriculture and about healthy eating. And then all of the food that we grow, we harvest and we bring to up to Washington DC and to neighborhoods that don't have grocery stores that have a high use of food stamps. And we sell them from mobile markets at totally affordable rates. We accept and we double food stamps, SNAP quick and senior farmers market nutrition vouchers. We also have programs right up the road um, along Route 1 that borders our farm, where we're working with community gardens and school gardens, um, uh, building up those uh, that sort of uh, skill set and food sovereignty with interns and with schools and with uh, in the neighborhood. So, um, so that's Arcadia, and that's the Veteran Farmer Program, and I encourage you to check it out on the web and to apply. And as I said, the next cohort begins in um, January for the Reserve Program. If you are looking for a paid job right now and are interested in the fellowship, we might have um, a little bit of funding available for that. So I would encourage you to uh, get in touch and um, send me an email. My email is pam at arcadiafood.org. More than half of the people who have graduated from our program are now farming. Um, a couple of them full-time, many of them sort of part-time. And some currently in the training program have their own farms. We find that this is an incredible statistic and it makes the USDA absolutely love us. It's a function of a couple of things. To pat our own backs, we created a training program that is really practical, sort of based on what I saw with left seat, right seat training. And, um, and it's immediately useful. And what we found when we were setting it up that what veterans told us is that they wanted like, don't make me sit through a lot of theoretical stuff. Tell me what I need to do. Let me go do it. And then let's talk if I failed. And, and if I did well, then let's talk about that too. So that's, that's sort of how we've set this thing up. We tell you just what you need to know, not a whole lot more and uh, let you kind of dig in. And but the real power I think of this is that people who feel called to farming um, don't have ways to get into it. And this is one of the rare pathways that's very specifically for military veterans that is a sort of, to, to use a phrase, a safe space um, where you can cuss with abandon. You don't have to worry about offending civilians. Um, my staff is constantly working to try to get me to stop cussing. But then once the new crop of veterans come in, it starts all over again. Um, so it's just, it's, it's culturally appropriate, I guess is the right way to say. And the people who feel called to farming are just looking for that excuse and that training and that encouragement to go ahead and do it. So two thirds of our, we've had, we have, let's say about 125 graduates so far, half are actually farming, but two thirds are still engaged in agriculture in some way, which might be they're uh, working part-time on somebody else's farm or they're growing, you know, a rooftop garden and taking more classes somewhere else, et cetera, um, or looking for land. And, and we help people with that too. So we provide ongoing technical assistance to our graduates. So if somebody for my 2017 class, which just did is applying for um, a federal grant for a value added uh, grant, I'm helping her uh, edit this grant and I'm connecting her to the resources and the people that will also participate. So, um, so this is an ongoing, a family, honestly. And, uh,